Hi, I'm Emily from Homemade Emily Jane. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about quilt binding. Um, I received a request recently about how to bind a quilt. And I do have a three blog series up with pictures and words that'll teach you how to bind a quilt three different ways. But sometimes it's a lot easier if you just see it in action. So that's what this video is for. Um, before I dive in, I want to let you know that you can always go check out that three-part blog series. I will link all three blogs in the description below. So part one of the series is how to prep your quilt, which I've already done. Um, so I'll walk you through what I did with that and then I'll show you how to attach the binding. So first step in prepping is to make your binding. So um, I take two and a half inch strips and sew them all together and then I fold them in half and press. And then I roll them into a little cinnamon roll like this um, and it makes it really nice and easy to put on your quilt without it getting all tangled up. So it's like a super neat little thing. And then um, I actually make the binding when I'm cutting out the fabrics for the quilt. So I cut everything out at once. I make my binding. I put a pin in it so that it stays all neat and cinnamon rolled up. And then I put it in a little binding basket for when my quilts are ready to be bound. So now's the time to use it finally. So here it is. Um, it also in prepping the quilt for binding, I trim all of the edges of the quilt because you know there's always the batting and backing on the edges. And then I serge around the edges as well. So I'll show you the quilt that I'm working on today. Um, it's my triangular pattern, which will be in my shop soon um, if you're watching this in real time. Um, so I serge around the edges once I trim it, and I'll show you up close like this. You can see that the edges are all nice and neatly finished. That's really just optional. It's something I like to do because it just really keeps everything nice and clean and together for me, and it makes everything else easier, in my opinion. Here's a quick video showing what it looks like when I serge around the edges of my quilt. You'll see that at the corners there's always a little bit of thread left over. You can just snip that part off. So if you don't have a serger, there are other options too. I recommend doing either a zigzag stitch or even just a walking foot stitch about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your quilt um, just to keep everything together at the edges. So that's what I do for prepping my quilt and making my binding. Now I'll show you how I sew the binding on on my machine. All right, now I'm at my sewing machine, ready to get started with sewing on my binding. Um, but before I do, I wanna share with you a couple key things that I like to do to make sure that I'm all prepped and ready to go. First off, I always put on my walking foot when sewing on the binding. So if your machine has a walking foot um, or has the option for one, you need to get one. It is life-changing, especially for quilting and binding. Um, so put on your walking foot. If you haven't changed your sewing machine needle lately, now is a great reminder to do that. Um, I try to change mine as often as I can. Needles are super cheap, I buy them in bulk. Just use a fresh needle. And then I like to use my quilting gloves when sewing on the binding because it helps grip the quilts a little bit better and just feed it through as evenly as possible. What else? Okay, so now I'm ready to put the binding on. Um, to keep it all nice and neat, I actually put the center of my cinnamon roll on um, an upward facing spool pin on my machine like this. Um, and then it feeds nice and evenly as I sew. So I hope you can see that all right. Um, now I'll put my gloves on. And um, when it comes to spacing out your binding, some people will pin the binding all the way around the quilt before sewing um, to make sure that your seams in your binding are not at a corner. Um, honestly, it, it is really annoying when the seam of your binding ends up at a corner of your quilt. So I like to try to mentally math it out so that I can try to avoid that. I'm not always great at it, but to me it's a lot easier. It's so much easier than pinning it. So. I'll let you decide what works best for you. Um, this is what works for me. So now you take your binding. I leave um, probably about an eight inch tail. And then I line up the edge of my binding with the edge of my quilt. And we'll go ahead and get started sewing. But before we do, let me change the angle real quick for you. 
All right, here we go. You will see that I have my cinnamon roll spool pen up here with the binding out here. Um, and like I said, I like to take about an eight inch tail and leave that as extra. I don't stitch on that part. And then I can come in here and start stitching. I like to do roughly about a quarter inch, maybe a tiny bit bigger of a seam here. So to do that, I like to line up this part of my walking foot with the edge of the quilt. I've got the quilt and the binding lined up here. I like to stitch um, the first side of my binding onto the top of the quilt. Like you'll see, this is the quilt top that we're working with. Um, and then flip it over and stitch it on the back. So I do the, the top first. So now here we go. Um, I'm using a 2.5 inch, or not inch, a size 2.5 stitch length. And um, I've got my tail. I'm gonna make a little bit longer of a tail and we'll start right here. Um, I My machine automatically will stitch three seams in place. Um, so that's always great to fix the seam. And then you just start sewing. Um, one thing I always recommend is to change the speed. So I'm gonna make it a little bit slower here um, and just really focus on getting a nice straight line. You'll see I do a couple inches at a time and then I stop and I readjust and then I keep sewing a little bit more. Once you've got a good amount back here that you've already stitched, go ahead and test it. Make sure that the size that you're doing is what you want. So flip it up as if you were sewing it to the other side and check out what it looks like on the back. Make sure that it covers up that seam that you just sewed and has a little bit of wiggle room there too. Different people have different preferences for how much overage they want, so I'll let you decide what you enjoy. But um, it's always good just to check once you've sewn about a foot or so um, so that you can see what it looks like. It's a lot easier to correct it now versus once you've sewn all the way around. So now I'll keep sewing until I get to the corner and then I'll join you back there. All right, here we are at the corner. I'm probably about three quarters of an inch away from the corner right now. So I'll sew a couple more inches or a couple more stitches until I get right to that quarter inch mark away from sewing to the edge of the quilt. And now I rotate the angle of the corner um, 45 degrees so that I am now lined up directly with the point of the corner here. And then we stitch straight off the edge of the corner. And now we are no longer stitching on the quilt. We rotate everything. I like to keep my needle down for this. First, pull the binding straight up so that the edge of the binding is in line with the edge of the quilt here. And then we kind of crease that corner. It should be a 45 degree corner right there, which is great. Um, and then we fold the binding straight down leaving that crease and lining up the top of the fold with the other edge of the quilt. So we've got this flap of fabric right here. Perfect. And so now we're ready to stitch the side and we're gonna start at the very top right here and stitch all the way down just like we had been stitching before. So now we can keep going. Um, and just stitch all the way around the edge. And now here's what it looks like in super fast motion, how I sew the binding along the long edge of the quilt. Working in sections and rearranging every couple of inches sewn. When you get to the corner, you do it just like I showed you earlier, stopping a quarter inch before the edge of the quilt, turning and stitching off the edge, folding your binding up, folding your binding down, and stitching the new side straight. 
All right, we are getting close to the end here. I've got my like six or eight inch tail um, that we left at the beginning. And I'm gonna try to leave a similar length um, at the other side as well so that we have um, at least a foot in the middle to join them together. Um, so when you get to that point, go ahead and just stitch in place or back stitch so that um, your stitches stay put. So I'll go ahead and let my machine do the trimming. And now we have um, our two tails and um, a little bit over a foot in between the two and we're gonna join them. Um, we join them, let me take my gloves off. We join them first by trimming because this tail is way too long. Um, and we leave two and a half inches of overlap because that is how wide the, the strips are, but I will take you to my cutting mat and I'll show you exactly how I do it. So here we are with our two strips of overlap. Um, you'll see the binding is already sewn down on these other two ends um, and all the way around the quilt. So we just need to combine to, to join these together. So first I will snip off, you'll want I like a really nice sharp pair of fabric scissors. I'll snip off the um, selvage, and then here's where things get really fun. You'll also wanna use a ruler. And I like to, to line my ruler up with the two and a half inch line here um, with the edge of the one overlap. And then you take your other overlap and you line it up um, just as if you were gonna sew the binding on. But first we are going to cut so we have this lined up with the two and a half inches. So we're gonna to come to the edge of the ruler here um, and we're just cutting the top layer here, one piece of binding. We snip that. So now we have exactly two and a half inches where they can overlap. So now we are gonna sew a bias edge here. So we're gonna overlap, let me, I always have to think about this. How do they go together? Um, so we're gonna go right sides together and we're gonna flip it this direction. So that, let me grab my pins real quick. All right, I'm back with my pins. Um, so the really easy way to do this is, I, I like two pins here. Um, so you line them up how you think that it's gonna go. You're gonna end up sewing a diagonal line like here. But before you sew, let's grab the quilt a little bit to give us some space. Um, I like to pin right on the line that I think I'm going to sew. So I've got like my fake stitches here, that's where my stitches would be. And then you pull the binding out and you'll see here it is not flat. There is a twist in this that is not supposed to be there. So now we take the pins out and we try it again. So let's see if I can figure it out this time. Let's try this. That looks right. Yeah, so it takes some trial and error here for me every time that I do this. Um, but you're gonna basically take the two and line them up so that you can sew a diagonal seam. So let's try it this way. Put the pins in where you think that your seam should go. Um, this, this feels right. And then pull it out flat and that looks like it's gonna work. So now where those pins are is where you're going to end up putting a seam. And you have some options here. Personally, I eyeball it, but if you feel more comfortable, you can definitely use your ruler and draw a line along that diagonal and then stitch on that line. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sew on this imaginary line right here, and then we're gonna end up trimming some seam allowance. So let's. Um, I'll go sew it and come back here for you. All right, now you'll see that I have sewn that simple seam across the two as a diagonal. You can see when we pull the quilt flat, it looks like it's gonna lay flat. But first we have to do some, some easy steps here. So um, you can use your rotary cutter and your ruler here um, if you get the quilt out of the way easily. You line your ruler up with your seam with a quarter inch and you can rotary cut along that line or if you have scissors handy 
you can snip snip at about a quarter inch. So there we go with that. Next you will press this seam open like so um, with your iron. But for now I can just finger press for the video. It works better if you use an iron. And then you pull it flat. So now we have a continuous piece of binding that perfectly fits um, your quilt. And I'm gonna go ahead and just sew from here all the way to here, and then we'll be ready to flip it over. So first we gotta sew. All right, we got the quilt over here. You'll go ahead, I like to start about an inch behind where I've already sewn so that there's some overlap. You'll do your stitches, and then you'll sew to where the other side is with that same seam allowance that you were using previously. Sometimes, if your binding stretched while you were sewing on the bias, you might have a little pucker. And you can see here, I'm probably going to get a little pucker in the binding if I don't do something. So one thing that I like to do to make that even out is I'll tug actually on both ends. So right here in the front and um, back here in the back as I sew um, and guide it so that everything stays taut while I sew that last couple of inches. And I do overlap at the end there, and then I will stitch in place and then cut the strings. Yay, we're done with sewing the first side of the binding onto the quilt. So you'll see here, it's sewn down, the raw edges are together, the folded edge is out, ready to be folded over onto the backing. Um, so now this is where the moment of truth comes in. You get to decide if you want to hand quilt or hand sew the other side of the binding down, which is so therapeutic and so wonderful. I love hand sewing it down because I get to snuggle with it and break the quilt in a little bit. And it's just, you can watch TV while you do it. Um, it's very slow sewing and to me, I love it. Not everyone loves it though. So, um, and sometimes I have timelines and deadlines. So for this one, I'm actually going to um, machine stitch it down, but I will show you just a little bit of how it would be hand sewn without actually doing the sewing. So here we go. I'm gonna readjust my angle. You can see the quilt is right here. Um, you're gonna fold over the corners. I like to start at the corners. Um, so fold it over. You should have a really pretty point there from the stuff that we did earlier um, on the machine. And then fold down onto the backing here. It helps if you have clover clips and you can clip it in place, but you don't need that. Um, you'll simply take your needle and thread. I like to start a couple inches from the first corner, um, like maybe right here and you will tie a knot in this um, hidden part that ends up getting folded into the binding. And then you'll do invisible stitches along this edge here, um, all the way until you get close to the corner. What I like to do is I fold the corner in here and do a clip. So you'll clip, clip, clip. I use about five clips while doing binding and when I get to one, I'll just take it and move it to the other end. Um, so that's how you would do it by hand. Let me readjust. Um, this one, because it is for a quilt pattern that is set to release very soon, um, I am going to do it by machine because it'll be a lot quicker and I still need to get photos of the quilt for the pattern release. To do it by machine, my first tip to do is to baste it. Um, so it's a lot easier if you use your iron and you baste it with glue. So I will show you a little bit of how I do that, but first I'll walk you through it. So you will do the same fold over technique that I showed earlier. 
where you just fold it over the edge. You'll press it. And then I like to use tacky glue, but you could also use like Elmer's school glue if you have that. I've also seen people use glue sticks, but um, they go through them really quickly. So I go with tacky glue. Um, and so you'll put a little thin, thin, thin line of glue and then refold it down and then press it again with your hot iron and that dries the glue like super quick. Um, and then it keeps it in place entirely in place so that you can then come back with the machine and do a nice clean little line of stitches with your machine with your walking foot um, and it goes super quick so I'll go ahead and show you that in case you're interested all right friends we are now at my ironing board I've got a jar of tacky glue a nice hot iron and of course your quilt so I'll go ahead and show you how I do this so I start off by pressing the binding upwards like this from the top of your quilt. I'll go ahead and use my hot iron. I press the corner if I can, but it's not as important because we'll get it later. Um, so I'll just go ahead and press a little section for now. But what I would typically do is press it this direction all the way around the quilt and then come back and do this other part. So once everything is pressed up, um, it just makes it easier to press it down this direction. So now we flip the quilt over. So we are working on the back side of the quilt. And we've got this is nice and ready to go. So now we're going to press it again. Fold the binding over to where you want it to be. And then leave the iron on it for a second. This is kind of just to get it where you think it'll go. Um, and for the corners, I do one side first. So I'll go straight up here. And, um, and then once the glue is dried on that side, we'll go and do the other angle. So for this part, we're just focused on this one edge. And I like to do it probably in just like one foot or two foot increments so that you don't get glue everywhere. So, okay, it's pressed into place like so. Now this is where the glue comes in. I've gotta shake it to get the glue down towards the tip. Now a very, very thin line starting at the corner here. Get a little tiny bit of glue in there and then I just drag it along the edge like so. And this all ends up being inside where the binding lives. You don't want it on the rest of your quilt. So you gotta be a little careful with that. Um, I'll leave that there. So now we've got glue. We gotta be very careful. Um, I'll go ahead and pull the binding back over just like we had it earlier, but this time with glue in the middle. And we repress and it is amazing how quickly the glue will dry with the heat of the iron. So press it into place. Now your binding is completely in place. Um, it's not going anywhere. And when we take it to the machine to stitch, it's so easy. So now once that edge is done, we're gonna rotate it a little bit and we're gonna work on the other side of this corner. We'll take this corner and we really wanna make sure that we fold it over itself so that the points match up at the bottom here. So I like to put a lot of attention there, make sure that it's lined up really well. And then I leave the iron on it for a little bit with some pressure so that it can be nice and crisp. I'll press a few more inches down. And as you can see, it like lines up really well right here at this corner. I'll do the same thing that we did earlier with the glue. Um, because I am a right-handed, I always start at the left side and move over so that I'm not like drawing my hand through glue. And so I'll just put a little dot and then start dragging it. Sometimes your glue tip might get some thread stuck in it. Um, I try to not let it bother me, but if it looks like it's gonna drag glue to some part of the quilt that you don't want glue on it, just be careful. Um, now this is where things get real fun. This corner, you gotta be careful of where it's gonna, um, where the fabric stops. So I like to put the glue just right at the little edge of the binding. Put the cap back on it and then fold it over 
here and we'll start going this direction with the iron. I am going to go ahead and baste the whole quilt um, just like I had shown with the binding and then I'll meet you back at my sewing machine when we're ready to start sewing the binding down. All right, I am back at my sewing machine. I have now basted all along the edges of the quilt with the glue, so it looks like the binding's already attached, um, but the final thing we need to do is stitch it down. So what I'm going to do is stitch in the ditch along the top here with white thread on this side and orange thread on this side, and it's going to catch the binding. Um, and it's going to show up on the back as a nice single line of stitches, but the front it's going to be hidden in the ditch here. Um, that's one option to do. You could use a decorative stitch, a zigzag stitch, if you really wanted to make it show. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you this way. So a couple things. Bobbin thread is now changed to orange. Top thread is white, like it was earlier. And... Um, still have the walking foot on and I'm going to wear my quilting gloves. So I'll get it situated and change the angle and I'll show you what it looks like. Now we're ready to get started sewing. First things first, I am going to change the speed on my machine to go at about half speed. Feel free to go even slower if you want. It definitely helps keep the line straight. Um, I'll go ahead and just start anywhere. Um, I'm going to start kind of close to the corner so that I can show you the corner in one shot. So um, if you can see where the needle goes down right now is right in the space directly next to the binding but not on top of the binding. You see um, when I first started it did three stitches in place and now I changed the setting on machine to stop with the needle down which I always like doing when quilting and binding. And then you just let it stitch. I actually feel like this is going a little fast, so I'm going to change the speed a little slower. Now, because the majority of the quilt top is white um, and the thread is white, I try really hard not to actually let it sew on the binding so that it eventually becomes pretty much invisible on the top of the quilt. When you start getting close to the corner, you gotta be real careful here. So I will show you, I stitch up until the corner. When I get really close, I use the manual crank on the side of my machine to then drop the needle right into that little corner without being on top of the binding. And then I pivot the quilt when the, when the needle is down. Um, and then once it, the quilt is repositioned, you just sew straight on. And it's as simple as that. Now I'm gonna finish sewing all the way around the edges of the quilt, but before I do, I'll show you what it looks like on the back side. You'll see I used orange thread so it blends in a little bit better. I probably could have used a slightly darker orange thread if I had it. Um, and then this is how the corner looks on the back. Um, it doesn't look quite as clean as if you would have hand quilted it, but it is so much faster. And you can see the stitches on the front are pretty much invisible. So anyway, I will finish sewing around the edges of the top and then um, show you what it looks like finished. And just like that, we are done binding our quilt. I'll show you one last time what it looks like. Um, this is the corner up close for you. You can kind of see the stitches in the ditch if you look closely. Um, and then this is the other side of the corner, which you can see the stitches um, getting the binding attached down. One final thing I like to do once I stitch all the way around the edge is I will inspect every single edge and make sure that the stitches made it to the binding um, all the way around just in case there were some parts that they might have slipped off the edge. Then you can go back and just um, tack those little parts down. But so far so good um, on this one, which actually might be a first for me. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little binding tutorial. 
if you want to see it with the hand sewing instead of the machine sewing for the second part of sewing the binding on, go ahead and drop a comment here. Um, if you have any other tips or tricks for attaching binding, I would love to start a conversation with you in the comments as well. So go ahead and leave some love in the comments section. Again, my name is Emily from Homemade Emily Jane. If you want to see the three-part blog series about quilt binding, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. Um, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications when I post new videos. And also check out these other fun videos to watch next. Thanks, bye!